Hey there, YouTube. It's been, uh, jeez, almost six months now since I made the last video. I thought it was, uh, time I came up with another one for you. Uh, things have been pretty hectic around the household. Um, uh, jeez, when was the last of my posts? I guess, uh, March, so in April, I got my CCNA, and, uh, within about two weeks after that, I got a job offer, uh, as a network engineer. Uh, for being contracted to one of the uh, larger Fortune 500 companies. Um, so I've been with them for about five months now. And uh, and right after that, we bought a new house. So uh, no longer in the little shoebox where we were at. So we're in a, a lot larger house now. And uh, as you can probably tell by my voice, uh, I am not 100% right now. I've Actually, I uh, got a little bit of a cold. Uh, we took our daughter trick or treating over the uh, uh, over Halloween, and she started getting sick. And uh, if you have kids, and you know that that passes around the household pretty easily, so uh, not feeling the greatest. But uh, I'm going to try to hold my voice together here, try to give you a uh, a little demonstration here. Um, I figure what we would do here is uh, try to show some. Uh, how to set up DHCP on a uh, Cisco router and switch. Um, what I have behind me, which is what you can probably hear with the, the loud fans going, is a Cisco 1841 and a, a very old school Cisco Catalyst 2900XL. Uh, this thing is very old school. I think the last iOS update on it was 12.0 which I believe was uh, 2001, roughly. Uh, so a lot of commands, if you're trying to do CCNP stuff, or even a lot of newer CCNA stuff, uh, it doesn't even support a lot of it. But uh, it was cheap, so uh, we're going to use it. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to jump into Putty here. And actually I actually have part of this already set up with uh, some management interfaces, so I can get into my switch and router via uh, just telling that from switch into the router um, so what we're going to start with is uh, I'm actually going to get into my router and I'm going to log in here alright so I'll show you what we got right now so pretty standard configuration right now I just have my loopback interface in here and as you see, I already have some sub interfaces. I'm running a uh, what we call a router on a stick, as uh, just uh, one link running from the router down to the switch. And since I have multiple VLANs, uh, I have sub interfaces running off of Ethernet 01. So you can see I have uh, VLAN 1, 90, 260, and 999. Um, what we'll do is we'll be using VLAN 260 for our uh, user VLAN and that I will apply a uh, DHCP for the users. And you can see uh, actually we have our gateway here already set up. It'll be 192.168.1.1 and that's pretty much all the config so it's very standard configuration nothing really done with it. So what we want to do, uh, if you have not ever dealt with DHCP on the router before, first thing you want to do is enable DHCP services. So you want to do IP DHCP. Take that back. Service DHCP. There we go. Sorry about that. Alright, now our service for DHCP is active. So now what we want to do is we want to create a DHCP pool for that VLAN 260. And we'll look back up here. That was a 192.168.1.0 network. It was a slash 24, so we'll have 254 IP addresses. And our gateway would be the 192.168.1.1. So what we're going to do is 
we give it to command, which is what I started to do. I got ahead of myself. IP DHCP pool. And then we want to give it a name. So we'll give it a name of uh, user VLAN. So now it has the pool created. So now we need to give it the network pool. So we do a network. And then we specify the network that we want to put in, which was the 192.168.1.0 network. And it's slash 24, so 255, 255, 255.0. And then we can also give it a domain name if we want, if we want to give it a uh, affiliation with that. Uh, we just do, just do testlab.com. And now we need to make sure we give it the default gateway. So, we'll look at our commands here. Default router, one. That will give us the gateway for the DHCP. And that is really all there is to this one. And we'll just see what we got. So here we have our IP DHCP pool, user VLAN. We have our network in there. They were default router, so we know that the 1.1 would be a default gateway for VLAN 260, which would be right here. So when you're doing your DHCP, you want it to always point to the sub-interface of your router, of this IP address is your gateway. So if you have multiple DHCPs, uh, what the heck, I'll show you. So we'll do uh, IP DHCP pool uh, 90, um, where I'm at currently, uh, 90 is actually the security VLAN, so we'll call this security. Network 192.168.2.0. And default router 192.168.2.1. .2 as you see here, is the IP address of that one. So that is there. So what this does, this specifies each DHCP pool to go to the specific sub-interface. So the DHCP will actually know which VLAN to dish out these IP addresses to, if you follow me on that. We'll give it a domain name too. Now, one of the last things to remember on this is your static IP addresses, which would be on this, obviously, your gateways. So your 1.1, your 2.1. You don't want those to be given out in your DHCP. So there is a command that we run on that to kind of preserve those IP addresses. IP DHCP excluded address. We'll do the 1.1 and we'll do the 2.1. And when we do a show run on that, you'll see that toward the top here. IP DHCP excluded address 1.1 and 2.1. So that'll save this IP address so it doesn't get given out. And 2.1 so that isn't given out. There we go. So now that that is created, I'll jump back over to the switch and we'll go to, let's go to the second Ethernet port since the first one is actually the trunk.
as you can see there, Fast Unit 01 is my trunk. Uh, Zero 02 already had some security stuff on there, which uh, I highly encourage to do on all your ports if you're putting this in a production environment. So, we will go to Fast Unit 02. We want to put this, let's put this on the uh, user VLAN. Switch port mode access, and switch port access, VLAN 260. So now that port is on the VLAN 260. And that is pretty much done. So now that that port knows that it's on 260, we can take a device, plug it into that port, and it will talk to that DHCP pool, and it will get a 192.168.1.2.254 address. And then if we want to, let's say, put the interface uh, 3, we will put that on the security VLAN. And we can do switchboard mode access. And switchboard access VLAN 90. And that one's set. So now our device that needs to be on security VLAN would be on security VLAN. That's really all there is to this. Pretty simple. And of course, always. Right your configs. I know I didn't do that on the router, but no big deal. And hopefully my voice wasn't too terrible and you can understand most of what I'm saying. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to post back on this video and I'll try to answer all the questions I can. Or if you need me to go more in depth on some of this, uh, such as how to create the tunnel, or sorry, the trunk uh, I can do a little video for you on that as well as always uh, please subscribe up there at the top and as always thank you for watching